Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul and today I wanted to finish up on my Rose of Sharon and also we're going to do a ton of cuttings of Rose of Sharon, Versinthia, and the Fraser fir that I pruned up yesterday. So just to give you a glimpse of what we'll be doing, these both are Rose of Sharon and I gave them a nice pruning yesterday. Not quite as hard as their friend over there, the Fraser fir. I went hard on that guy, but um, has some really cool branching and a lot of good potential. I'll probably let it grow pretty much for the next two years again. And well, maybe next year I might check out the roots. I have them planted above a burlap sack down there so that they can't go too deep. And yeah, I might have to prune the apex next year, but other than that, two years we'll go on this guy. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, lots going on early spring at the ranch, so I just basically have to pick a job and start it. So that's what we're doing right now. That's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so if these weren't already here when we got to the ranch um, about four years ago, I would never, ever plant them in the dog yard because it's just a waste. Um, but it's just such a convenient spot. We've got the doggy door off the plant room up there. And then they have the whole deck. And then that, there's a little gate up there so they can't go further to the front. And then they've got their stairs down into their dog yard, which has been secure. Bruce Lee and Millie used to get out all the time, but They've been going easy on me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Laura likes to see the hummingbirds and butterflies above the, tr the window line. So I'm going to be a little less aggressive than I was with uh, those ones on the side there. And I'll probably prune them with the goal to be right where the white hits the glass. And yeah, so that should take out some of the top heaviness because when they were uh, end of summer last year they had a ton of foliage on them and when they would get wet or the wind would come they would literally just flop over the tops because it was a lot of thin fast uh, new growth with a lot of weight on it so I'll fix that I've also been working on getting these to be all about the same height it was way shorter a little shorter a little shorter and then massively tall so I'm gonna probably be there this year so and I also have to clean up down beneath there's wildflowers that grow down there so I'll actually I'll pull all those weeds out and I will put them down here I'll give you the update on the raised tree bed raised tree bed I've been working on with recycled 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 pallets <laughs> um, Yep, so I have a nice layer of cardboard, which it's already been made, it's free, it's biodegradable, it's a great weed barrier. If you're spending a lot of money on the rolls of weed barrier, this will work just as well, if not better. Um, and it also biodegrades along with, I've got a bunch of leaves, hi Carl, leaves and a bunch of different soils and wildflowers and other stuff that I like to have on the bottom. So it acts like a compost, decomposes, giving uh, nutrients to the tree roots. Um, so on top of that, I have some fill dirt I'm going to throw on. I have a pile of soil I'm going to throw on. And then I'm going to finish it off with uh, sweet peat. But I have to pick that up with the, uh, with the trailer when it hasn't been raining a bunch. Because heavy, heavy mulch. It's like you're pulling around like... Uh, a ton of bricks. I don't want to put the stress on the Volvo. So this raised tree bed, half of them are in sandbags and the other half I planted straight in. But I started that with uh, leaves and grass and then I went with soil, planted the trees in it and then I uh, backfilled it in with uh, bark mulch. So it's kind of, that breaks down, acts as a weed barrier, also breaks down, feeds the trees as well as from beneath the grass and the leaves. So I'm just replicating that and that's where the Fraser firs and the Rose of Sharon cuttings and for Cynthia are gonna go. All right, I'll get to it. All right, I keep saying I'm gonna get started, but 
I have three plastic trays filled three and a half to four inches uh, full of just perlite. And then once, I'll probably wet it uh, beforehand. And then I'll start sticking these cuttings. Those are Rose of Sharon cuttings on the other side. And the Fraser fur cuttings. So I kind of got my station set up for afterwards. And I'll need the saw and the two pruners for these Rose of Sharon. Actually, I'll probably use these pruners. They're better with thin softwood. These are better with hardwood. Neither are very good. I went with the cheap route, and I'm going to be looking soon on Amazon for some better ones. All right, now I'm going to get to it. All right, y'all. So it's been, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes, and I got all of those um, wildflower weeds from last year and discovered amazing things. So first off, I always know there's some really small daffodils that pop up here probably previously planted by another uh i don't know this house is built in 85 and we've been here about four years so somebody before anyways i'll get to the point quick quick look at these volunteers i hope you can see how many there are like they're like grass okay there we go you see all those some nice sized ones boom boom i mean hundreds so it's like i have a raised tree bed already and these i know are rooted so i'm going to just let them all grow this year i'll be mindful to not weed whack past like i guess the step line and i'm just going to let them all grow in and then i could you know maybe harvest them that next year or the following probably late april how exciting is that Cool. So apparently my tree farm is going to be predominantly Rosa Sharon to start. <laughs> All right. I'm going to print these bad boys up now. All right, y'all. So I have just been chipping away at this. Started at the bottom. Got rid of any suckers and interior growth. And I found a common line. I wanted to start the branching at going across all four. And... Now I'm going tree by tree, about a foot up at a, tee, at a time. Shortening branches, trying to get them all to about the bottom of that window height. Uh, so some branches are getting much less for pruning, some are getting much more of a pruning coming down now. Um, but I feel good about cleaning these up. I left a bunch of lower growth on this one, a little less on this one, a little less on that one, and then nothing on that one because like I said, I wanted to even them up. So, I think we're getting there. Let's say another three years, these will all make sense. So Stella and Laura are chilling out here. It's a nice sunny day. Hey Stella, what's up baby? <laughs> you see I've taken quite a bit off already. So those are the larger branches. I probably won't mess with those for cuttings and then these are the cuttings from these trees, and I have a whole other bucket from the other two. So continuing on. All right, so we have our friend Carrie over, and she had a daughter, Skylin, born, I think like 10 hours after Stella, coincidentally. <laughs> and so Stella was two days late, or two weeks late, and Skylin was two weeks early. And uh, Laura, Carrie, and I were all We've all been good friends for a long time. So anyways, it's really cool watching them grow up together. I'll show you what I'm doing on this Saturday. So I've got my avocados and Delonyx Regia Forest outside, an avocado and uh, black locust outside. Usually I would leave the black locust outside, but the avocado is sensitive, so I bring it in at night. That's the only black locust I have. I do that, and it's the only one without thorns, so... I guess they protect themselves when they are outdoors. So I've got the Fraser firs, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm just plopping them down in this perlite. And like I said before, it's about three, between three and a half and four inches. And if they're like, you know, fanning out a bunch, I'm just removing the side branches and like, and then sticking them in. So that also allows you to put them closer together and they don't like overlap and stuff so 
That's what I'm going to do with that. And I'm also going to be doing the Rosa Sharon. I'm just going to be sticking them in. I'm not doing anything special. But I'll show you the progress. I've been really taking my time here with these Rosa Sharon. So the only two I have to do still on the top are the second and the fourth tree. And they're the two dominant trees. So I wanted to do the two smaller and see where I would have the canopy naturally. And then I'll take these down a little bit harder. Yeah, so I don't see the need to continue on the video. You see what's going on. I'll keep you updated on the propagation on the Fraser firs and the Rosa Sharon. I didn't even show you the Versinthia, but I will before we get out of here. So I showed them on a previous video, but I have these for Cynthia soaking in water and they are starting to grow roots. And of course, I'm not going to be able to focus. Here we go. Yes, all those dark buds, those are roots. So they started out white and now as they're elongating, it's hard to see, but they are there. Um, they're kicking off roots. So. That's really cool. Let me see if I can pull one of these out. And yeah, okay. So you see how crazy bumpy that is? Yeah, see that's not normal. Those are root swelling. So these are the thicker ones that I thought there was no chance that I would get to survive, but I'm gonna start putting them outside. I don't think I'll have room in the perlite, so I might just do them in water and bring them in at night. Uh, same kind of plan as the Fraser fir and the Rosa Sharon. So, I'm going to go play with some babies and uh, have a nice Saturday. I hope you all do too and are enjoying the great weather. So, Jared Paul from the ranch, from my family, yours. Cheers.